Are we going? Okay, we're live. We're live? Okay, thank you. All right, I'll call the building committee uh, meeting to order. This is our very first meeting of this new year. And so welcome to everybody. And I suppose I should also say happy Groundhog Day to you all. Um, so um, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, physical distancing measures, the city building committee is meeting virtually. Members of the committee, executive management, and the city clerk are participating via video conference. And the senior leadership team is not visible, but are available to answer questions related to the items on the agenda. Our very first item is an item that was referred by general committee uh, to us on November the 30th. And it has to do with a memorandum from uh, Ms. Br Brunette. Um, regarding um, uh, single-use plastics uh, in the city. Um, and I understand, uh, Councillor Elwin, you have a motion. I sure do, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, so I'll put this motion on the floor um, and it has been circulated uh, that staff in the Business Performance and Environmental Sustainability Department, Recreation and Culture Department and Access Berry develop a program to encourage local businesses and event organizers to discontinue the provision of single-use plastics at their establishments or events with an approach suitable to their operations, and that the city implement a voluntary ban of single-use plastics at all city facilities and city special events. And then paragraph two, that to encourage participation in the voluntary single-use plastics ban, city staff develop an associated outreach program that complements federal, provincial, and municipal circular economy initiatives. Okay, thank you. Um, we have uh, the uh, memo in front of us too, I'm sure, and uh, now the, the motion. Any discussion or questions? Councillor Congo. Thank you. Um, through you, Chair Ritma, to um, uh, Councillor Aylwin. Um, Great to see uh, a motion coming forward. I do have some questions, I think that relate more to whether or not I'd pose an amendment uh, to it that might just come through city uh, questions to the city. Um, and through reading the memo, I was aware of some um, progressive um, changes happening out of Aurelia, I think a couple of years ago. Um, and um, before I frame some of my questions, I guess I'll start with, um, the motion does, and, and the memo also talks a bit about the, um, the ban, but that we're talking specific to events that um, uh, all city facilities and city special events. Um, so through you, Councillor Ritma, to staff, when we talk about special events, is there anything for the committee to appreciate that falls um, through permits, but not city events that we could control for? So I'm thinking about things like Kempenfest and Ribfest. Um, could you give us an idea of what core ones fall under city events uh, without going through a, a robust list, but those that really do fall out of that, that we might want to then have discussions about how we might apply this to uh, permitted events. All right, uh, Councillor Edwin, did you want to respond to that? That was uh, for staff. Oh, our staff, staff, somebody on staff. <clears throat> Ms. Miller. Through you, um, uh, Chair Ritma, Sandra Benet is on the line and um, can certainly provide some additional context. Um, but as you noted, it is um, uh, city events, but also city permitted events. So the kind of things, Councillor Kungle, that you were speaking to, Kempenfest is a permitted event. So those kind of things would fall into that category. But Ms. Brene might um, have some additional comments uh, as she's the author of the, uh, of the memo. Ms. Brunet. Good evening. Uh, through you, Chair Ritma, um, <clears throat> Councillor Kungle, the, yes, the events that we could uh, apply um, this initiative to would be the permitted events, and they would include, similar to what um, Ms. Miller said, uh, with regards to Kempenfest, Ribfest, um, Promenade Days, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Thank you, Ms. Brunet. I do have a follow-up, uh, Chair Ritma. Sure, go ahead. Uh, to you, Ms. Bernay, or to uh, Ms. Miller. So uh, I had uh, spoken with representatives 
from uh, the city of Aurelia that have been quite um, active uh, around the uh, Mariposa Folk Festival. So it draws a huge crowd. Um, I'm asking uh, the following question because I'm not sure if it might tie into an opportunity to connect to this motion. Um, when we talked about um, aspects related to waste and waste diversion and landfill, um, my understanding was while they took measures to restrict plastics, if they went the next step to actually look at a certain type of compostable material. My understanding though was that there was a bit of a learning there and I didn't know if you could help us to appreciate, although we might be divert, you know, reducing plastics, whatever we're asking for them to be replaced with, um, our staff looking at special events um, and where they go from a landfill. And um, my question is, I'm not clear, I believe Aurelia for some of their events like the Mariposa Folk Festival actually went to a different landfill tied to that event. And I wasn't sure if we have contracts where our event waste doesn't go to the Berry landfill and that there has to be a consideration for what meets compost and recycling um, expectations for it to be appropriately just disposed of. Does that make sense? So I can, I can take that through okay. you, Councillor, uh, through you, um, Chair Reitman, uh, to Councillor Kungel. Um, <clears throat> so currently the waste um, in the waterfront areas and, and downtown do go to the city of Barry Landfill. The recycling, the materials in the recycling receptacles do not. Although they are uh, more than 50% contaminated with garbage, they probably do end up in a garb in a landfill site, but not the city of Barrie um, landfill site. And so, oh, Councillor Conkle, anything else? I think I saw Andrea signaling. Oh, <laughs> Ms. Miller. Thanks. Yeah, thank you um, to you, Chair Ritma, uh, to Councillor Kunkel. I think the other thing that's uh, important to understand in this, and then we've tried to outline uh, in the memo, is, is that it's really important that um, the implementation of this motion um, for the voluntary ban and all of the things that you're talking about go hand in hand with the circular economy framework that is in the second part of, of uh, Councillor Aylwin's motion. And that, um, that uh, framework is coming forward to Council for consideration in March and and I just think that people need to understand it, it what you're asking for our staff will be able to implement but the timing of it and and sort of the outreach programs and how we actually craft that implementation which includes some of the things that you're talking about mm -hmm. will be in the context of that circular economy and and staff need a little bit of time to be able to bring that forward and then be able to um, implement and answer some of these um, detailed questions that you're that you're uh, asking. That's great. And so final comment, um, I'll pose it as a question uh, through you, Chair Wheatna, to Ms. Miller. So, you know, I'm looking at further down on the agenda where we talk about our landfill and different metrics around capacity and, and forecasting that. Um, and great to see that circular framework come back and also aware that we've got our midterm strategic directions um, that we uh, endorsed, I think, in concept, they're going to ratification on Monday. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm assuming that there'll be metrics tied to this and the circular uh, framework that will come back. Will we see that at the same time as we see some of the key performance indicators that staff have indicated would come back to our strategic directions as it relates to a waste diversion and that where this fits under our strategic directions? Through you, Councillor Ritma, to Councillor um, Kungel, uh, the circular economy framework will have um, key performance indicators and a number of different elements with it. But again, we um, are just starting that process. So you're going to get uh, a framework, you're going to have an opportunity to provide some input to that, but that will not be part of this um, sort of uh, update that you're looking for right now. We certainly do have some information on KPIs related to the landfill, but um, the more robust ones that I believe that you're referring to um, will come out of the circular economy framework that is um, really the focus of 2021 and 2022. Great, thank you. That's all my questions. Okay. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Councilor Morales. Uh, thank you, Chair Ritma. Just to the move of the motion, uh, Councilor Alwyn, I, 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 uh, I joined the meeting, I think, half while you were reading your motion. Um, what 
what happens if basically does does your motion affect the Pepsi the Pepsi Cola companies of the world? Like, is this affecting single use or no? Is this just for this doesn't affect essentially the vending machines? Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, so the motion was circulated, so you'll have it in your your, your email. But it speaks to um, a voluntary ban at this point. Um, okay. And if you look at the report, it's option three in the report. Um, and and there's a number of reasons for going with the voluntary approach uh, at this point. I think it's possible to develop a program to really communicate out to the community and encourage um, and celebrate those businesses that make the change. Um, and then have the city lead by example with our uh, events and facilities. Um, and I, I think recognizing too with, with the pandemic, uh, a lot more takeout uh, is happening. Um, so it, it's a voluntary ban. So uh, short answer is Pepsi will probably not voluntarily. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that'd be great, but. <laughs> change, change uh, thank you, Chair Reitma, uh, change through compromise. Uh, I know exactly what that's like, Councilor All when we, uh, I was back in 2017 when we got charging stations where uh, a truck, a gas truck could park in them and the only way to get them through at the time was to compromise. So I, I, I still applaud I, I get it, but it doesn't happen right away. Uh, no further questions, Sherry. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Uh, questions, comments? Seeing none, Councillor Owen, did you want to make any final comments? Uh, no, I think I've said all I'd like to say. Thank you. All right, okay. Well, then I'll take the vote. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? None. That carries. Thank you. All right. Um, second item is advisory committee reports. Um, we have two advisory committee uh, reports to be received. Um, can I have a motion to receive, uh, first of all, the report of the Heritage Berry Committee dated November the, or December the 9th, 2020, and also the report of the Heritage Committee dated January the 13th. 2021. I'll move the committee reports, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, any questions, comments on those two reports? All right. Uh, all in favor of receiving them? Thank you. That's carried. Um, we have two recommendations that come out of the Heritage uh, Berry Committee report of uh, December the 9th. Um, and the first recommendation is a replacement of the door frame and transom window at the South Shore Community Center. Um, and the, the motion is that consent be granted in accordance with section 33 of the Ontario Heritage Act to allow for the replacement of a door frame and transom window at the designated heritage property municipally known as 205 Lakeshore Drive with the proposed alterations described in the Heritage Berry Report dated December 9, 2020. Move that motion. All right, uh, thank you, Councillor Kungal. Any questions and comments? All right, all in favor? recommendation from that um council right oh sorry sorry i think you're bumping your microphone or something with uh just with maybe some paper it uh on our end it comes across we can't hear you oh okay well it's important to hear me sorry about that yes yeah, no we want to hear you <laughs> i appreciate that um all right uh, the um, other report or the other uh recommendation coming out of that um uh, report is the uh, Municipal Heritage Register, um, 59 William and uh, 188 Collier Street, that the properties known municipally as 59 William Street and 188 Collier Street be added to the Municipal Heritage Register as listed properties. Uh, somebody put that motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Kungal. Any questions, comments, uh, Mayor Lehman? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to declare potential pecuniary interest on 59 William. It's a couple of doors over from where I live, and although it's certainly an indirect interest to have a neighboring property listed, 
Uh, I wouldn't want there to be any questions, so I'll declare on this item and I'll turn my camera off and not participate in the discussion of the vote. All right, uh, Madam, Madam Clerk, has the mayor's uh, conflict or potential conflict been noted? Yes, it has, Chair Eatma. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, any further discussion on that uh, motion? All those in favor? All right, any opposed? That carries, thank you. Um, the um, uh, other report that we have um, to the committee is a memorandum um, from uh, Ms. Brunet again, um, and it has to do with the environmental sustainability concerning Bill 197, the proposed changes to approve requirements for new landfill sites. Um, you've seen this memo and we have uh, had uh, at our November meeting, we had uh, a person in speaking to that very question. So any comments or questions with respect to the memo? Seeing none, um, that's completed then. I don't think we have to have a motion to receive it. Do we, Madam Clerk? No, no you don't need to. No. All right, that brings us to the end of our agenda. So this concludes the uh, City Building Committee. Thank you very much. Move to adjourn. We'll, we'll see you in shortly at seven.